Can you believe Big Little Lies Season 2 is actually over? In a lot of ways, the finale wrapped things up in a neat little bow. But it wouldn't be Big Little Lies if it didn't somehow manage to end in a cliffhanger, right? I don't mean it in a negative way. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I do. Here's what you may have missed during the finale and what the ending meant. Spoilers ahead. As teased in the penultimate episode of Season 2, we finally got to see the showdown between Celeste and her mother-in-law, Mary Louise, played by Nicole Kidman and Meryl Streep, respectively. With both women battling for custody of Perry and Celeste's twin boys, the kid gloves were officially off. Seeing as she's an attorney herself, Celeste took the opportunity to personally question Mary Louise. Did you ever lose your temper with your boys? Well, this isn't simply about temper. Of course, it was a risky move, and a choice that made Celeste's legal representative squirm. It begged the question, would this grieving mom be able to face her late husband's mother and keep her composure? After all, Mary Louise wanted to remove the boys from Celeste's home, and she fiercely denied her son Perry's abusive behavior. In the end, Celeste kept her cool while delivering some very hard truths. In the courtroom, she even plays a video of Perry physically abusing her, which was apparently filmed by one of the boys. Faced with video evidence, Mary Louise finally had to acknowledge that her son wasn't the person she'd believed him to be. I simply had no idea. Going into the season finale, you may have been expecting a particular scene one that never quite materialized. In her July 16th appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live, Shailene Woodley, who plays Jane, divulged what sounded like a major spoiler. She promised something truly nuts would happen right at the start of the episode. It's a, a little bit of a cliffhanger, but all of the women go to visit Perry's grave, and his body's missing. Uh, what? Woodley claimed the showrunners gave her permission to share this little tidbit with the world. And we were all left to wonder how this plot wrinkle would fit into the spine-tingling finale. The possibilities seemed endless. Would the police exhume Perry's body? Was he actually alive? These were just some of the questions we were left to ponder. Well, it turns out Woodley was totally trolling us. There was no gravesite visit, and there was no missing body. Woodley totally threw us for a loop. And, well, she almost got us. Here's footage of how we reacted to this news. Prior to the season finale, a fan theory started picking up steam. A Reddit user theorized that Corey and Perry were actually brothers, writing, Having mentioned the deceased brother Raymond many times, subtly, throughout the season, and it's clearly playing a role in the season finale, it is very likely that this aspect of Perry's life will be used as the final plot twist. Raymond did end up playing a role in the finale, but thankfully for Jane, not the way this Redditor imagined. But yes, we do find out what happened to Raymond. In a flashback, we see a younger Mary Louise exiting her car shortly after an accident. In the scene, Perry's younger brother sits motionless in his car seat. We hear Mary Louise berate five-year-old Perry. Look what you made me do! Did you ever say to him, look what you made me do? No! We learn that Mary Louise lost her temper while driving and subsequently crashed. According to Celeste, Mary Louise immediately pinned the blame on Perry, and Celeste argues that this constitutes emotional abuse. In the very beginning of season one, we're introduced to Detective Adrian Quinlan as she arrives on the scene of Perry's death. In the season one finale, Quinlan is clearly spying on the Monterey Five through binoculars. In season two, it quickly becomes apparent that she's still very much investigating Perry's so-called accident. At the end of episode five, she even calls Corey in for questioning, who later tells Jane. And she knows your history with this guy. She knows he raped you. She knows he's Ziggy's dad, and she clearly doesn't think he slipped. As he tells it, Quinlan also left Corey with an ominous message. He reveals to Jane, She said with five witnesses, the odds are in her favor. One of you will finally crack. First one who does gets a break. Because of her continued interest in Perry's death, you might have assumed Detective Quinlan would end up bringing down the Monterey Five in the season finale. But despite all the buildup, the detective was conspicuously absent from the final episode. Seeing Mary Louise get her comeuppance in court was riveting when the judge ruled in Celeste's favor and we found out that the twins would be staying with their mother. It truly felt like a victory. And although it may have been hard to feel sorry for Mary Louise, it was still quite apparent that she loved her grandchildren. After the court's decision, Celeste encouraged her sons to give their grandmother a hug. 
and our hearts collectively shattered. As Celeste's therapist Dr. Reisman stated in the fourth episode of the season, I've seen the way these things play out, nobody wins. It's hard to know what will happen to Mary Louise. At the end of the episode, we see her driving out of town. It's possible she'll still try to be involved in the lives of her grandchildren, albeit from a distance. Maybe Celeste will allow her to visit the boys from time to time. But after everything that went down, it's hard to see any good coming out of that. Maybe she'll also keep trying to pursue a relationship with her other grandson, Ziggy. But would Jane allow it? It seems rather unlikely to us. Ahead of Big Little Lies Season 2, show creator David E. Kelly told The Hollywood Reporter, "...there was so much more to tell with the characters, especially with Bonnie. We only hinted about who Bonnie was. We had not mined where she came from and what led to the big push at the end of year one." The second season delved into Bonnie's past, and what, or who, led her to push Perry. In present-day scenes and flashbacks, we get to know Bonnie's parents, an abusive mother and a passive, willfully ignorant father. After her mother suffers a debilitating stroke, Bonnie reads aloud a letter she wrote. While doing so, she confesses to her mom what really happened at trivia night. I snapped, and when I lunged at him, I was pushing you. Bonnie does eventually find peace with her mother, but only right before her mom passes away. As we just mentioned, Bonnie's letter in Episode 6 features the bombshell that she killed Perry. But that was, of course, something the audience already knew. What we didn't know was how she really felt about her husband Nathan. Their relationship was particularly tense throughout the second season. Then again, Bonnie was keeping a pretty big secret so we can understand why she was keeping her distance. But later on in the season, we come to learn that the situation was even more complicated than that. Bonnie reveals to her mother, I settled for a man that I don't... <laughs> Bonnie doesn't finish that sentence, but she tells Nathan the truth shortly after her mother passes away. She's not in love with him, and she doesn't think she ever was. Throughout much of season two, it seemed like the lie about Perry's death was eating Bonnie up, but the fact that she didn't really love Nathan was evidently eating her up too. Although we don't know what the future has in store for Bonnie, the truth may just set her free after all. The season two finale gave us some real insights into the lives of the women at the heart of Big Little Lies. With Mary Louise out of the picture, Celeste can finally move on. Did you notice that she deleted a video of Perry from her tablet? We can't help but think there are better things in store for her in the future. Things are looking up for Jane, too. She and Corey are taking their relationship to the next level. Although Renata doesn't seem to be getting a particularly happy ending, she does finally get retribution against her cheating, selfish husband Gordon. She takes a baseball bat to his toys, including a train set worth six figures. And she also takes a swing at Gordon. It's a very Renata ending. Don't go there. Sure. Don't go there, judgy judger. Madeline, on the other hand, was able to salvage her marriage. She and Ed decided to renew their vows in a private ceremony on the beach. Although Ed says they're not putting a tidy ribbon on their past, that's pretty much how their storyline seems to wrap up. In the final moments of the Big Little Lies finale, Bonnie sends a text message to her literal partners in crime. Unfortunately, we never get to see what she wrote. All we know is she sent the message, and the rest of the Monterey Five meet her at the police station. Earlier on in the season, it's clear that the women are adamant about maintaining the lie. But now it looks like they're all ready and willing to come clean about Perry's murder. Earlier on in the episode, Madeline tells Celeste, I've been thinking a lot about something you said a while back, about the lie, and that it was that it had a shelf life. I think you're right. After Renata destroys her husband's room of toys, she tells him, No more lies. She may have been talking exclusively about his lies, or she may have been talking about her own lies, too. Although there's no way to know what happened after the ladies entered the police station, at least we know they're presenting a united front. Just as everything appears to be going well for the Monterey Five and the finale seems to be heading into the credits, a song starts to play. It's Creedence Clearwater Revival's Have You Ever Seen the Rain, performed here by Willie Nelson and Paula Nelson. And this is much more than a song about the weather. The Big Little Lies soundtrack is full of Easter eggs. From the theme song to the moody music Bonnie broods over, the show has integrated music into the action in highly creative ways. As music supervisor Salmon Aztal told Elle, "...the way we started it was we had different playlists for each character, with thoughts of where they might be in their lives." In the season two finale, it sounds like Have You Ever Seen the Rain is foreshadowing the ending of Big Little Lies. Key lyrics
lyrics include, Someone told me long ago, there's a calm before the storm. I know it's been coming for some time. When it's over, so they say, it'll rain a sunny day. The song continues to play as we see all five women enter the police station. Considering how the last episode of season two played out, fans were immediately jonesing for a third season. They must have been thrilled when Nicole Kidman revealed in an interview with News Corp Australia, I think we would love to do a season three because there is certainly ideas, but we would not do it without all of the same people involved, even the kids. But don't get your hopes up too much, at least not yet. Casey Bloys, HBO's president, told TV Line, I love this group of people. I would do anything with them. But the reality is, they are some of the busiest actresses working in Hollywood. But he's not completely ruling out a third season. He'd be all for it if everyone's schedules happened to align. Nevertheless, he added, I just think it's not realistic. Season two was a chance for everyone involved to end the franchise in a way that feels satisfying. Guess we'll just have to wait and see whether there will be new episodes of Big Little Eyes. If there isn't, we're not going to take the news very well. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more list videos about your favorite TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.